Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. One king! One! Huskies! Gold. Gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog Yukon King as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Fellas and girls, long hours at school or playing basketball or other games call for a hearty breakfast. Tomorrow, make yours a breakfast of delicious Quaker Puff wheat or Quaker Puff rice with milk or cream and fruit. Quaker Puff wheat and Quaker Puff rice furnish added health benefits of restored natural grade amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. What's more... These ready-to-serve king-size kernels of premium wheat or rice are shot from guns to make them crisp and tender. They're delicious. Yes, try them. You'll say, here are breakfasts we like to eat. Quaker puff rice and Quaker puff wheat. Two men hidden by a tall rock stood near a bend in the trail that led to Raccoon Crossing. Jules, a shifty-eyed French-Canadian, was dwarfed by the tall, burly form of Jay Lyman, who stood with his rifle ready, watching the trail through the lightly falling snow. He should be getting here soon. He wasn't more than five miles from this bend when we spotted him from the top of the hill. Yeah. You hear that? Uh, he's close. There. Come on, Ben, now. I'll do any shooting that's necessary. You stop the door. It's good. You're a much better shot than me. All right, let's go, Jules. Yeah. Stop that team and put up your hands. As the two men ran toward the startled trapper, Lyman's foot caught in a root concealed by the snow. He fell headlong. Stop that team! And at that moment, the trapper pulled the trigger of his revolver almost in Jules' face. But the next instant, Lyman's rifle spoke from where he had fallen. The trapper fell forward in the snow. His dogs milled about wildly on the trail. Oh, oh, you mongrels. Get up. Jules. Jules, are you hurt, Pat? I tripped on a root, but I got right after he shot you. He's dead. I better get you on a sled. No, no. Too, too late. Hey, Jules. Jules. Ah, dead. I guess I better leave my rifle here, Jules, old boy. They think you killed them. They may not look for anyone else. I'll get these furs to Dirk. Fish! Fish! Get along there! Fish! It was late that night that Lyman sat with Dirk Crane in the back room of his trading post at Raccoon Crossing. Dirk's appearance was deceiving. He was very fat, with a round red face that was almost jovial until one saw the sly little pig eyes that shone like small bits of steel from the flesh that framed them. He smiled as he looked at the pile of furs Lyman had brought in. It's a good old Lyman. He'll knit us plenty. Especially now that we divide two ways instead of three. Yeah, it's too bad about Jules, but it means a lot more money for both of us. Yeah, but I can't handle these holdups alone. I need someone to help me. You can't do it, that's sure. No, I might be recognized. Anyway, we won't be doing any more holdups for a while. According to my records, most of the trappers have brought in their season sketching. <laughs> the ones who made it, I mean. I hope the bodies don't come around asking to see your books. You let me attend to that, Lyman. I'm not a fool. All the furs are accounted for, whether the trappers themselves brought them in or whether you did. The furs that you brought are listed under names of trappers far out of range of the Monty's Patrol. Now, don't worry. They'll never suspect me. I've had this trading post too long. 
Until you came, I wasted my time making a little money, honestly. Well, you better not depend too much on your honest reputation. Those Mounties aren't fools. Corporal Andrews, the Mountie who patrols this district, is a good friend of mine. He'd never suspect me. That's why it was necessary for you and Jules to keep out of sight. No, the Mounties will never suspect me. Hmm. Dirk Crane would have been surprised if he had heard the conversation that was taking place at Mounted Police Headquarters in Dawson City as Inspector Grayson talked earnestly to Sergeant Preston. Beside the sergeant lay King, the Mountie's big lead dog, his head raised, his ears pointed forward, as if he too were listening to the words of the inspector. According to Corporal Andrews, this Dirk Crane who runs the trading post is honest and law-abiding, but we can't afford to leave anything or anyone unchecked. The fact remains that most of these four robberies and murders have been committed in the territory within trading distance of his place. No furs that were stolen have ever been recovered, and he's never reported anyone who might be suspected. Have you ever met Dirk Crane, Sergeant? Why, no, sir, I haven't. I've never been in that district. That's what I hoped. Sergeant, would it take you long to grow a beard? A beard? Why, no, sir. Well, start growing one today. I'm going to send you up to Dirk Crane's district. But you won't be going as a mounted policeman. I see, sir. This isn't going to be too easy. The disguise is only part of it. You're going to have to do a bit of acting. I did quite a bit of plain clothes work in Montreal. You're not going to be just a prospector or trapper. You're going to play the role of a murderer. A murderer? That is a bit different, sir. You'll have to work out the details yourself. But some way, I want you to represent yourself to Dirk Crane as a man the law is after. If Dick Crane is on the level, he'll report you. If he isn't, there's just a chance that he may ask you to replace the man who was killed in the last robbery. I understand. We may be going to a lot of trouble for nothing. But on the other hand, we must be sure. May I take King with me, sir? I don't know. Someone might recognize him. After all, he can't grow a beard. No one up there has ever seen King, Inspector. They might know him by reputation, but they'd never recognize him. His name might make them suspect. A lot of dogs are called King, sir. King's had so many dogs named after him. The whole Yukon Territory is full of them. Well, you can't take him up there looking like he does now. Look at him. His coat all brushed clean and sleek. Nobody would ever take him for a dog belonging to a criminal. When we meet Dirk Crane, King won't look like that, I promise you. Very well, Sergeant. I know what a hardship it would be for both of you if you were separated. Take King with you. Thank you, sir. It'll take you some time to get ready for this job, Sergeant. Think it all out first, and report to me before you leave. It took Sergeant Preston almost two weeks to get up to the district where Dirk Crane ran his trading post. Corporal Andrews of the Northwest Mounted Police lived about five miles from Dirk Crane's. He sat alone in his police cabin reading a book. It was very late, and the corporal had put his book aside and started to bed when there was a knock at his door. Good evening. Uh, Something wrong? Who are you? Do you mind if my dog and I come in and get warm? Why, no. No, come on in. Thanks. Uh, Just uh, sit down near the stove. You lost? No. Well, uh, you in uh, trouble? I'm Corporal Andrews of the Northwest Mounted Police. Uh, This is the police cabin. (laughs) That's just where I belong. Well, what are you... Still don't know me, do you, Charlie? And you don't even recognize King. Though he almost wagged his tail off when he saw you. King? Oh, Preston! Well, what on earth? I thought I'd try you first. That's why I didn't let you know I was coming. Of all the bedraggled-looking people I ever saw. And King, look at his coat, his fur. Poor King. He's puzzled about all this, I suppose. He's not the only one. What are you up to? The inspector sent me to help you with this fur robbery and murder. I couldn't ask for anyone better, but why the masquerade? He thinks perhaps Dirk Crane has something to uh, do with it. Dirk Crane? I know Dirk. <laughs> when you see him, you'll know that he couldn't have anything to do with a holdup. He's so fat and so big, he'd be spotted in a minute. Uh, I'm afraid the inspector's wrong this time. Those are my orders, Charlie. I'm going to wait for the next blizzard. And by the looks of things, there's one on the way right now. Then I'm going to pretend to get lost. It was the following night that Dirk Crane started to turn down the light in his trading post. 
He knew that no one would brave the terrible storm that whistled around the walls, and he'd have no more customers that night. As his hand reached for the lamp, he hesitated and listened. He was sure he had heard a dog bark. There's such a dog. What do you think someone's getting? Hey, what's wrong with you? I went... Just a minute, I'm coming. Over here. All right. Throw your arm over my shoulder. Hey, come on. Can you walk? I'll try. It's just a few more steps. It's a good thing that dog was with you. I'd never have hurt you. Oh, here we are. Lift up your feet. I'll try. There's a cot in the back room. Hide. We got away. What's that? Yeah, lie down. I'll cover you. Up. I only got away. But the hangman who killed their partners. You killed somebody. Gotta keep going. Don't want to hang. Yeah. Gotta keep going. Drink this. Yeah. <coughs> That'll warm you, Abby. Take another sweater. <coughs> What's your name? Name? Gotta keep going. Lie Police. Still uh, now and try to sleep. You don't know what you see. Gotta keep going. I... <sighs> Looks as if that master of yours is in a bad spot of some kind. <laughs> Maybe he's just the man I'm looking for. We'll continue our story in just a moment. For a breakfast that's delicious, for a breakfast that's nutritious, remember these three famous words. Shot from guns. Yes, shot from guns stands for the original, the one and only, Quaker Puff Rice or Quaker Puff Wheat. These are the giant size, the king size grains of premium wheat or rice shot from guns to make them bigger and better tasting. Think of it. Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are actually exploded up, up, up to eight times normal size. That makes them crisp and tender as nuts in November. And as Mother knows, wheat or rice shot from guns makes a deluxe family breakfast that's inexpensive, that's easy to fix as falling off a log. Just pour out a bowl full, add some fruit and milk or cream. Talk about good. What's more, long hours at school and play call for a hearty breakfast. And Quaker Puff wheat and Quaker Puff rice furnish added food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. So how about it? The whole family will be getting off to a flying start when you eat Quaker Puff rice or Quaker Puff wheat. It's never sold in bags or bulk. To get the original, crisp, fresh, wheat or rice shot from guns, always buy the big red and blue package with the smiling Quaker man on the front. Get Quaker Puff Rice and Quaker Puff Wheat. Now to continue our story. Dirk Crane didn't know that the man he found in the snow was actually Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted. He misinterpreted many of the things the Mountie said and gathered the impression that he was a fugitive from justice. This was right in line with Sergeant Preston's plan. The following morning, Dirk Crane looked searchingly at the unkempt, haggard man who sat across from him. Would you like a cigar? No, not now, thanks. Hmm. <clears throat> Funny your dog wasn't hungry. I tried to feed him before you woke up, but he wouldn't touch his food till you gave it to him. Well, you see, I had to train him to take food only from me, unless I said it was all right. I was afraid someone might try to poison him. Maybe a, a partner? Well... Where's your partner now? What? Why are you... 
Why do you ask about a partner? Was he all right when you left him? My partner? Of course he was. You don't remember coming in here last night, do you? Not very well. I guess I was a little out of my head. What's your name? You haven't told me. My name? Why, uh, call me Smith. That's as good as any name. <laughs> Smith. Eh? Someone's coming. That's a dog team. Uh, I'll see. Uh, that's Corporal Andrews, Northwest Mounted Police. What? I wonder what he's doing here so Where'd he come from? There's a police cabin about five miles from here. He's a friend of mine. Crane, would you do me a favor? Would you mind not telling him I'm here? Oh, uh, why? Oh, you afraid of the mountain? Why, uh, please do as I say. I'll go into the back room. Go on. I won't let on I saw you. Hide in the back till he leaves. Thanks. Monty. <laughs> Mr. Smith, eh? Yeah? Well, hello, Corporal Landers. Uh, hello, Derek. You're out pretty early today, aren't you? Well, it's been a murder up in the hills, about 20 miles from here. Just got the report this morning. I have to go up and investigate it. A murder? Where did it happen? Uh, about three days ago. Uh, I'm looking for a certain man. I have a pretty good description of him. You have? What does he look like? Well, I'm looking for a big fella, well built, has a dark beard, gray eyes... Always has a dog with him. Big silver gray dog that sticks to him like a shadow. Mm. He might stop in here for some supplies. You uh, seen anyone like that? The big man, the gray eyes, dark beard, and the uh, dog with him. You've seen him? Why, no. No, I haven't seen anyone like that. Oh, I thought maybe you had. You, uh, you sure? Positive. Well, if you do see him, try and hold him here if possible. I'll be back sometime tomorrow evening. You bet I will, Corporal. Thanks, Dirk. Bye. Good luck, Corporal. <laughs> you can come out now, Mr. Smith. Has he gone? You know he has. You heard everything we said. Yes. Yes, I did. Thanks for not telling him about me, but why are you doing this for me? Maybe it's just because I don't like Montes. And maybe... Well, uh could be another reason. What is it? Before I tell you, I'll have to talk to a friend of mine. He's at a cabin hidden where no one can find it. Not far from here. He may want some company in that cabin. And maybe I can give you a hint if it'll make you more comfortable. You see that pile of furs there in the corner? Yes. I make a clear profit on them. And part of it can be yours if you play along. You mean steal them? Maybe. In addition to keeping hidden from the Maltese, you you can make enough to get out of the country. I'll play along. Good. But before we come to an agreement, I have to make a short visit to the cabin alone. I'm uh, going to lock you in the storeroom, you and your dog, until I return. Very well. Just a precaution. I don't trust anyone. That's my motto. Dirk Crane took a long roundabout trail to the cabin. He was puffing and out of breath when he entered it and put a sack of supplies on the table. Hey, I thought you'd be needing these, Lan. It's about time you showed up. I'm going crazy here all by myself. One more job and I'm taking my money and getting out. So you miss jewels after all. At least we could play poker. Well, you don't have to worry anymore. I found the man we need. Yeah? The police are after him. He murdered a man. I take it he isn't any more squeamish about that sort of thing than you are. How did you find all this out? He got lost in the blizzard last night, trying to run away. Where did he kill this man? About 20 miles from here. Corporal Andrews came in and told me about it while he was hiding in the back room. So the Mounties know about it already. An Indian reported it to Andrews this morning. It happened three days ago. This killer was hiding out... Then got lost in the blizzard. He didn't get very far in three days. This all sounds a little fishy to me. Why? Why could he come to your trading post? He must have known that's where the Mounties would check. He probably wouldn't have come there if his dog hadn't brought him. He didn't know where he was. He has a very intelligent dog. Big, handsome brute that never lets him out of his sight. What's the dog's name? He calls him King. Okay. I believe Dirk, when I was in Dawson, once there was a Marty there with a dog named King. They pointed him out to me. How do we know that <laughs> Being this... alone has made you suspicious, Lyman. 
There are hundreds of dogs named King. Do you think this fellow in my storeroom is about dead? Well, you should see him. The bodies are always well groomed. Maybe so, unless they pose as killers to get the goods in a couple of I nights. know this man's all right, Lyman. I'll bring him up here tonight and you can see him for yourself. All right, bring him up. But don't bring his dog with him. Fair not. If he is the Marty, I want to deal with him alone. I'll bring him up here after dark and you can look him over. Without the dog. <laughs> yes. Without the dog. Sergeant Preston, still wearing his disguise, was waiting when Dirk Crane returned and told about the meeting with Lyman. The two were ready to set out when Crane Just said... Just a minute, Mr. Smith. Your dog stays here. Why can't King go with us? Lyman's orders. He wants to talk to you, but he told me to leave the dog behind. King won't like that. Tell him to get back, King. Sorry, King. You're not going this trip. Get back, boy. I said get back. Good thing he obeys you. I'm not joining up with you and your pal unless that dog stays with me. That will probably be all right after you and Lyman get acquainted. But not at this first meeting. All right. Let's get going. No, King. Stay there, boy. King clawed at the door and barked a protest at being left behind. His instincts told him that despite his master's command, Sergeant Preston had wanted to take him along. He barked and whined and clawed, but the door was solid. Sergeant Preston was tense with excitement as he followed the huge figure of Dirk Crane through the woods that night. He hadn't dared to bring his gun with him for fear of rousing suspicion, but he hadn't counted on King's being left behind. Dirk Crane outlined his proposition as he trudged through the snow with Preston at his side. So you see, Smith, it's perfect. I get to the furs and split three ways. That sounds fair enough to me. The cabin has a storeroom in back of it, where I keep the furs for a while. I take them out gradually. It's foolproof, you see. I see. Dirk. You sound like a man who's been educated. <laughs> yes, yeah, so do you, Smith. That's one reason I'm glad you're joining us. You, like me, are probably the black sheep of a good family. Well, we'll have enough money soon to go back to the great world again. <laughs> well, here's the cabin. Meantime... Alone in the trading post, King whimpered and whined and scratched the door for some time. Then he realized that this was useless. He lay on the floor with his nose close to the door. And presently, he heard approaching footsteps. He rose and waited. It was not the step of Sergeant Preston that he heard. It was only old Pierre LeBlanc, who had dropped in late for some tobacco. He opened the door and King leaped through the opening. Is that dog! He almost knocked me down! Dirk! Dirk! Hmm. Hmm. Nobody is here. Oh, well, I, I take my tobacco and leave mine. As Sergeant Preston and Dirk Crane entered the cabin in the woods, the tall figure of Jay Lyman rose to greet them. The lamp was turned low and the light was dim. Hello, Dirk. Lyman, this is the man who calls himself Mr. Smith. Howdy. Hello, Lyman. Hang your park on that nail. It's hot in here. Thanks. Want me to put yours here, Dirk? Uh, I'll keep mine on. Right. We're not going to stay long. I left the store unlocked. I'll turn this lamp up. It's so dim I can hardly see it. Smith may throw in with this lamp. You'll have plenty of time to explain our message and what he'll have to do. Yeah. I hope you two will get along to there. You're going to be seeing a lot of each other. Mind if I sit down? Stay right where you are. Put up your hands. What? Lagman again. Smith isn't armed. What's the thing? He isn't carrying a gun. I'd have shot first and talked afterwards. This is the Mountie I told you about. The one I saw in Dawson. You're sure, Lyman? You think I'm a Mountie? I don't think. I know. <laughs> if Turk hadn't told me about that dog that brought you to the trading post, you might have fooled me with those clothes and that beard. I might not have noticed the resemblance. Now, keep back and keep those hands up. Dirk will tell you I'm a very good shot. He's an excellent shot. What's your name, Monty? I can tell you. It's Sergeant Preston. You could be mistaken. I'm afraid it won't make any difference, Sergeant. Or Smith. Or whatever your name is. We can't afford to take a chance. Take a chance? Even if you're not Sergeant Preston. Your resemblance to him is unfortunate. I'm afraid we'll have to dispose of you. 
If I am Sergeant Preston, Corporal Andrews would know it. Have you thought of that? We'll deal with Corporal Andrews later. As soon as he gets back. Shall I give it to him now? You know I dislike violence, sir. Me first. Goodbye, Sergeant Preston. It's too bad we couldn't work together. I was beginning to like you. Hurry up and get out. I want to get this over with. I'll try to do it with just one shot, Lyman. Well, as Dirk opened the door, a gray body streaked past him into the room, almost knocking him from his feet, as King, with a roar, launched himself at Lyman, throwing him to the floor. Help, get away! Help, get away! Get away, you... As the big dog charged, Sergeant Preston sprang into action, and his fist crashed against Dirk's jaw, sending the big man sprawling. That'll take care of you for a while. I have his gun, King. Back, fella. On guard, boy. All right, you two, get up. I am Sergeant Preston. And I arrest you both in the name of the Queen. How, how did that dog get you? I don't know, but I'm very glad he came. I'll take you both back to the trading post. Corporal Andrews has orders to come back tonight to see what I've discovered. I'll have a surprise for him. You wouldn't have it, but I hadn't been for that dog. You're right. King, I don't know how you got out of that trading post, but you made it just in time, boy. And now this case is closed. <laughs> In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Friday's adventure. Discover why Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice win the praise of many a He-Man Hollywood movie star. Eat wheat or rice shot from guns at your home for breakfast tomorrow. These king-size grains are actually exploded up to eight times normal size to make them crisp and tender, bigger and better tasting. They're good, they're good for you. And they're never sold in bags or bulk. Buy the big red and blue Quaker packages. Get the original crisp, fresh Quaker puff wheat and Quaker puff rice. And say, fellas and girls, be listening. Yes, be on hand for news about an exciting special offer that's going to be made to you listeners to this program. It's out of this world. Don't miss a single broadcast. You'll hear it soon. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns. Little Friday, when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King... Meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case of ambush. When King and I found the man who had ambushed me, the case was by no means closed. There was a lot of thrilling action before we finally solved the mystery of Blue Nose Canyon. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Friday. For a delicious hot breakfast, eat Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Yes, the giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Say, boys and girls, you want to be a star someday in sports and activities? Then start on good Quaker Oats breakfast tomorrow. Because nourishing oatmeal gives you more growth and endurance than any other whole grain cereal. Still less than one penny a serving. Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice. So long. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company. <laughs>